We have tried for so long to make space flight something that every part of our nation can believe in and feel like they can be part of at some given point. Ellen, being the first Hispanic female to fly, we brought a whole other group of Americans to the table that said, oh, I can do that. I can actually do that. I was raised in Southern California, a suburb of San Diego. My dad's family, of course, is from Mexico. He was the youngest of 12. He was the manager of a Sears store. My mom is probably the smartest person I know, but of course, at the time that she was growing up, there weren't a lot of career options. And in fact, she never even graduated from high school when she was young. So after she was married, she went back and got her high school diploma and then raised five kids. And she actually ended up graduating from San Diego State University, which is the same school I graduated from two years after I did. <laughs> 1983, I was in the middle of getting my PhD. A couple things happened. Sally Ride flew in space, first American woman in space, definitely caught my attention. And then also NASA announced that they were opening up applications. So I just sent in my application when I graduated in 1985. So I wasn't selected that year, but in 1989, NASA announced that they were gonna go through another selection process. And that year I was selected along with 22 other people. It's one of those phone calls you know it's going to change your life forever. So fairly early as an astronaut, and when we went to the International Space Station design, there was a pretty small cadre of astronauts that participated in that design. Ellen happened to be one of those. We went up to International Space Station when it was very tiny. We were actually the first space shuttle to dock with the International Space Station. And so every time we took a shuttle up to the International Space Station, we had to pull hardware out of the back of the shuttle, basically the cargo bay, and connect it to the space station. And this was like Ellen's specialty. Everybody knew she was the best robotics operator we had. So that gave her a great opportunity to fly multiple times. And she's all over the International Space Station, whether she helped put it together and assemble it, or whether she led the teams that, that took on the missions after she quit flying. But as a leader, later on when she moved up into positions like Deputy Center Director at Johnson Space Center, Center Director at Johnson Space Center. The responsibility for making sure the systems that were carrying crews to the International Space Station, hardware to the International Space Station, was all on her. There's a lot of different jobs that you have as director and I, I kind of think of it in, in two ways and one is accomplishing today's mission and one of them is accomplishing tomorrow's mission. Of course that meant the International Space Station program, it meant the Commercial Crew program and then also the Orion program which Johnson Space Center is still developing today and, and that's the vehicle that will go beyond low Earth orbit and someday further on uh, to Mars. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure Copy. messages, and we did not copy your last. Is it instrumentation, lab. Max? Uh, flight Max, those are also off. Roger. Off the Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. Less than a year later is when we lost the Space Shuttle Columbia and her crew. And so that really changed everything. And so when we lost Columbia, it was very difficult. We just lost seven of our very close family members, and the program's kind of turned on its head upside down. There's a long investigation process, and then the whole process of us working through the findings and recommendations is the return to flight process. Of course, part of that was understanding what actually had happened, and then what you needed to do to the shuttle itself to make it safer to fly, to get back on track, and to get back to flight. It was a time where I saw Ellen step up and really help stabilize and lead through a, a pretty trying, challenging time. Those of us in human spaceflight were really dedicated to not only understanding what happened, but to getting back to flight. Um, we thought that was really the best way that we could memorialize the people that were on that mission, as well as continue in the field that we had all dedicated our professional careers to. All systems are good. Along with Ellen, we got the program back on its feet and we were flying again in two years. Start, two, one, boost the mission, and lift off of the space center to 
It's definitely a difficult decision to decide, you know, when you leave a, a career like I had at NASA, which was just more than I could ever have imagined. You know, I think probably the best way for me to characterize Helen's influence, not just on the Hispanic community, but the entire community. I was in a Safeway in Severna Park, Maryland, getting some groceries, and there's a huge poster hanging from the ceiling of Helen Ochoa, and it was celebrating the first Hispanic astronaut. Obviously, she's a gifted scientist, engineer, leader, but I think she's, her legacy is going to be how much she contributed as a role model. Well, I just remember how important it was for me when I saw, for example, the first women who were selected as astronauts and the, the first women who flew in space and, and some of the first underrepresented minorities who flew in space. I mean, those all made a big impression on me. So if I have that opportunity then to, to give people that sense of excitement that, you know, if I work hard, I can do these exciting things too. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, that you can have these dreams and these goals and you can apply yourself and work toward them. They can come true. And you can really be part of something that's bigger than yourself. And that was something that was really important to me and uh, something I wanted to pass on to my kids.